and welcome or welcome back to Solo Marvel Champion. I've played Storm in each aspect, so now it's time to shine a spotlight on her hero kit. My general thoughts about Storm is that she's a very flexible hero, especially for solo play. Her weather deck can do almost everything, and her events just amplify that. I personally don't like the perfect defense archetype with Storm though, so stick around and I'll explain why a bit later. Before I go any further, check out the poll on the community tab of my YouTube page to vote for which Guardian I'll be playing in my next series. In Alter Ego, Aurora Munro has the more or less standard 6 hand size and 10 HP with a 1 and done setup ability and recovery of 3. Her lone Alter Ego card, Aurora's Garden, heals for 2, which isn't nothing, but if you're the type of player who likes flipping down to Alter Ego, like me, and need a better reason than recovery to do so, you'll need to add that in yourself. The expansion didn't excite me when I first saw it, but it got much better with Newton Education, which shuffles two identity-specific cards back into your deck, and if you have expansion in play, you also get to draw a card. That's a pretty good reason to flip down to Alter Ego, and since flipping down also means flipping back up, Moira McTaggart is decent too. Better in multiplayer for sure, but still decent in solo if you're going to flip a lot. If you are spending some extra time in Alter Ego, Meditation isn't a bad option for getting an expensive card into play, such as her Cape, the X-Jet, Colossus, Beast, etc. Medlab is a notable leadership card if you're running an ally-heavy deck. With that out of the way, let's take a look at Storm's Weather deck. Aurora begins the game with a weather deck, and her setup ability tells you to choose one card from that deck and put it into play. Because this is chosen at setup, which is the last thing you do before starting play, you'll make that choice based on what the villain put into play and what's in your opening hand after your mulligan. Each card in the weather deck is permanent and has two abilities. The first ability affects all characters on the board, friendly and enemy, and the second is a special ability which is only triggered in specific ways. Clear Skies gives all characters stalwart. Neither you nor any other character can be stunned or confused. More importantly, if you do have a stunned or confused status, gotten while some other weather was in play, flopping to Clear Skies will remove those conditions. Just be careful if you plan to dish out these statuses to enemies, because Clear Skies will prevent them from sticking. The special for Clear Skies is draw a card, and as we all know, drawing cards is good. We'll talk about another great use for Clear Skies when I get to Economy. Thunderstorm gives all characters plus one attack, so it's great during the hero phase, but not during the villain phase. That said though, if there are no minions out, I'll usually stay in Thunderstorm. I don't mind taking one additional damage since I like flipping down. Thunderstorm's special is deal two damage to an enemy. This is great to ping off a tough status, defeat a low health minion, push a villain to its next stage, or even just finish off the villain. Hurricane gives each character retaliate, making it another great weather to have in play going into the villain phase. Just be aware that if a character is defeated, it doesn't retaliate. Hurricane's special is remove two threat from a scheme. Blizzard gives all characters minus one attack, which is useful against many small minions, like Ultron drones, but of course, it'll dull all attacks, friendly and enemy. It's good to have this in play going into the villain phase. Its special will blank the text of a non-elite minion until the end of the round. And honestly, I actually forget about this most of the time, because I'm only thinking about the minus one attack. But if you have a minion in play with guard, triggering this special removes its guard text for the round. Finally, note that each of these weather cards have a different resource icon, and I'll reference this again when I get to economy. Now let's flip up to hero form. Storm has the standard hand size of 5 and a stat line of 121. That's not great for solo, but it isn't terrible either because Storm's kit has ways to boost each of these stats by 1. There are two ways to trigger the special ability on the weather support in play. The first is Storm's weather control action, which lets you, once per round, swap to a different weather support and then resolve the special ability that's on it. For example, let's say you're in Thunderstorm and have become stunned. Use Weather Control to swap Thunderstorm to Clear Skies, which will clear the stun because now you're stalwart, and resolve the special which draws you a card. That's really powerful and doesn't cost you any resources. 
The second way to trigger the specials is with Storm's Event cards, although not all of them will trigger every special. There are three copies of Weather Goddess, which is a zero-cost superpower that behaves like Storm's weather control ability. Swap to a new weather and then resolve its special. This lets you swap more than once in a round and can be really powerful. If you have one of these in your hand, spend a little extra time pondering your turn to take advantage of it. Next is two copies of Blast of Wind. This is a three cost superpower which deals three damage to the villain and each minion, then resolve the special ability on your weather support. Note too that it's not an attack, so it gets around guard. Lightning Bolt is a three cost attack superpower, and there are two copies of it. Deal eight damage to an enemy, plus two to any enemy if Thunderstorm is in play. So swap to Thunderstorm, which deals two damage, then play Lightning Bolt, which deals eight plus two more for a total of 12. Then attack with everyone because they all have plus one attack. Even if you're not in Thunderstorm, it's still three for eight damage though, which is right where your signature attacks should be. But getting 50% more damage for no cost is super easy to pull off. There are three copies of Torrential Rain. This is a two cost thwart superpower, which removes three threat from among schemes in play, which is super versatile and then resolves Hurricane Special if it's in play. So, using the most powerful example again, do all the attacking you want to do first, then swap to Hurricane to remove two threat. Play Torrential Rain to remove three, then resolve Hurricane again to remove two more. That seven threat, which can be split between multiple schemes for two resources plus a card. That's versatility. Finally, there are two copies of Flash Freeze. This is a one-cost defense superpower that will give the villain and each minion engaged with you minus three attack until the end of the phase. Then, resolve the Blizzard special if it's in play. This is a pretty good defense event, and great if even a single minion is in play. Notably, if there are no minions in play when you play Flash Freeze, you can't resolve the special on Blizzard. Most of the time that won't matter, but it does matter when you're using Storm's Cape. Storm's Cape has a hero response which reads, After you resolve the special ability on your weather support, exhaust Storm's Cape, arrow, meaning everything I just read was a cost, ready Storm. Resolving the special is a cost, so you have to be able to resolve a special to ready with Storm's Cape. If you can, that's a free ready every turn. And extra readies can be great in Storm because Thunderstorm gets her up to 3 attack. The Ally Forge can find you Utopia, which will ready you when you play an X-Men ally, and Professor X can ready Storm too. Storm's Cape also gives you Aerial and plus one defense. Aerial's great, but I haven't added any Aerial cards to my deck because you need the cape in play to be able to play them. Plus one defense gets you up to two, which is especially good if you want to defend and play Flash Freeze against a really big attack. But, I mentioned earlier that I don't like basic defending, especially perfect defense where you defend often, at least until I get her obligation out of the way. Storm's obligation, Claustrophobia, can be really bad if you're exhausted when you draw it, because it locks you down for a full round. Claustrophobia forces you to flip to Alter, it isn't a choice, and you can't change forms. The only way to remove it is to exhaust your Alter Ego, which you obviously can't do if you've already exhausted. That might not matter if you have some allies out to thwart, but if you don't and already have a full main, the villain could scheme out. Now let's look at economy. Storm's crown, like her cape, has two abilities. It gives you plus one thwart, getting you up to two, and exhaust to generate the printed resource on your weather support. Most of the time this is just a resource and you don't care what type it is. Of course, sometimes you do, like when you play a card with a specific resource requirement. Another great way to use it, though, is to help remove attachments which have resource requirements. Swap to Clear Skies, which has a wild icon, and draw a card. Exhaust Storm's Crown to generate the wild, and hopefully, since you've just drawn another card, you have all the resources you need, making it really easy to get rid of those attachments. Another resource generator which is very good in Storm is Deft Focus. All of her 12 events are superpowers, although Weather Goddess costs zero, so it doesn't count. The X-Jet can be tutored by Forge, and if you're playing Leadership, Clarity of Purpose is a must. While Storm's Crown and Deft Focus put you in a really good place, having a third generator allows you to play Blast of Wind and Lightning Bolt for no resources from your hand. 
All right, before I get to my conclusion, let's take a look at Storm's Nemesis set. Callisto is a 135 Elite minion with Quick Strike. Elite matters because it means Blizzard Special can't target Callisto. Quick Strike matters because it only affects heroes. If you're an Alter Ego, Callisto doesn't hit you, and that's another good reason to spend some time in Alter Ego if Shadow of the Past hasn't come out yet. Finally, she has a Forced Interrupt which gives her a tough status if Knife Fight is revealed. Leader of the Morlocks comes into play with two threat per player and has an Amplify icon. When you defeat it, you go find a knife fight, so ideally you want to defeat Callisto before defeating this scheme. There are two copies of knife fight, which surge and alter but have an interesting effect in Hero. Choose an enemy with the highest attack, which might often be Callisto because she has three attack, or five if she has the switchblade attached, and you trade blows with your attack values. This is why you want to defeat Callisto first. If you defeat the scheme first, she gets a tough status when you reveal knife fight, which is just going to be pinged off instead of dealing her damage. Something I didn't notice when I first started playing the game is that your hero's kit usually gives you a way to deal with their nemesis. Just swap to Thunderstorm to deal 2 damage to Callisto, then attack her for 3. I think Storm is one of the best heroes in solo play. Her weather deck and 15 card kit handles almost everything you want to do in a game, meaning the aspect you choose is really about flavor. There's no stun or confuse built into her kit, but that's fine because clear skies is going to knock them off anyway. Her kit also doesn't give you much of a reason to flip down to alter ego, but there are some great cards which give you some motivation to do so. So that's Storm, my favorite solo hero at least right now. Let me know what you think about her in the comments below. Please like, sub, and leave a comment if you want to help my channel grow, and hit the bell icon for notifications. Don't forget to go to the community tab on my YouTube page to vote on which Guardian I play. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.